Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Jackie M.A. Grenier, debut author of cyberpunk mystery novel that should be coming out this fall, although everything is according to my evil plans, so everything should be fine. Today I will be talking about a book that I've actually read a while back. I referenced it on my channel multiple times. I'm going to be talking about the book. The Inugami Curse. What my channel is all about, about how-to videos, how to write dialogue, how to write XYZ, got a bunch of vlogs as well, and reading excerpts too, and one monthly book review. So if you guys do like that kind of content, hit the like and subscribe button and ring the little bell to be notified of when I upload. I unfortunately broke my Tuesday streak, but if it wasn't going to happen this week, it was probably going to happen in the weeks to come because my checklist is just so high. Let's get right into the book review. The Inugami Curse is from Sushi Yoko Mizo, and if I keep looking over here, that's where my laptop is. And that's where all my notes are, so that's why I will we'll just like continue to scan over it, like scan over here. So this book is a who done it. I have come to realize I have that I not only like mystery novels, but I love who done it novels as well. And as you guys know, I've already done a book review on the Decacon House Murders. This one. And this was a, a pretty alright book, but compared to the Inugami Curse, um, it's pretty me mediocre at best, but it's still a good book. But anyways, we're not talking about the Decagon House Murders, we're talking about the Inugami Curse. The story is about a detective named Kosuke Kanaichi, who is summoned to investigate the Inugami clan. But, thing is, the lawyer who summoned him actually turns up dead and after listening to the will with the family shortly after the lawyer's death, Kandaichi is taken on a whirlwind dark loop of legends, secrets and cruelty like no other he's ever really seen since ever. So this book is just a thrilling ride. It was a lot of fun to read. Like, Sashi-san knew exactly what he was doing. He knew how to write a good book, and this book will keep you on your toes until the very last page. And if not the very last page, but the very last sentence as well. I don't like comparing books, but unlike the Decacon House Murders, this book had me thinking about the why and had me questioning my own sense of direction of the book itself and I could never have guessed who the murderer was and yet I also really really should have known at the same time like you'll get mad because it should have been obvious and yet it was not so what I'm gonna do for my own personal research again is that because this was a whodunit book and it's a mystery novel, I'm going to be rereading it again to conduct my own bit of research on Japanese literature and even continuously going down my little train of thought on how to properly write a mystery book. Because this book was wrote in a similar way to... Lars Kepler's Lazarus, you should have known who it was, and yet at the same time, you're going to be mad at yourself because you should have known who it was, and yet you're on your toes all the freaking time. I should have known who it was. I'm, so, I'm still so mad about that. And there is a movie, and I've been trying to find where to watch it, and... I can't wait to watch the movie because I'm just super excited about that. But I'm also a, like a mystery nerd, so 
There's nothing new, new about that. So, like, the book follows an episodic pattern like many other detective series. And I like Kendaichi as the main protagonist, but the book also followed a few other characters as well. Some of them were flawed, of course, but they were also well intended too, especially Tamayo, the adopted granddaughter of the late Seki Unagami, the guy who left the well. For me personally, the book was actually hard to forget in general. Because there are many ways the books could have ended. And I love how the author made the book storyline open-ended. Like, it could have went in many, many different ways. And yet, I think that was also his style of writing, too. Because it had me... Sorry, Lunar. <laughs> because I didn't buy this one, actually. A friend of mine... Uh, it actually lent me the, the first Kadaichi book, The Hongjin Mur Murders. And this guy's style of writing is so like so open-ended yet so careful that it's like if you miss one word, the whole book might not make much sense. And that's clever storytelling in my book. The story itself was tense and yet hateful yet fun at the same time like you it's one of those books where like you really really want to hate some of the characters and yet they're entertaining to watch because they're also such hateful characters that was super fun to read it was just like in general really hard for me to put down even though I really wanted to savor. I wanted to savor this book, but I, w I was done it in just a few days. You it was that good. I couldn't put it down. I but I needed to see who done it. Hey, who done it? I wanted to see who did the thing. I wanted to see how they did it. I wanted to see it all. The plot was so well written that I've actually taken it into consideration that I need to write down notes whenever I do decide to reread it again. And it was just, it was just a great read, you guys. It was super awesome. And then like, I swear, like, if anybody does need, like, a good mystery novel to read, The Inugami Curse, you guys. I'm telling you, this is worth the money. This one was... Uh, 1995 at Indigo and this was worth the money and I wish I could like erase my memory just so I can like go back and read it again but I guess it's like that's also like part of the fun of a mystery novel too like you want to go back and reread it and see if you can put it together again yourself because I still have yet to reread Lazarus but I also have four other books up uh, three other books from Lars Kepler, aka with the Juna Lena series that I do need to read. And like this one is just like it's just it's so much fun. Mm. Yeah. Now this one I highly recommend for anybody who does need a good read. So now, as for the final rating, I feel like this is probably my most generous rating ever. This book, I will rate at 4.8 detectives out of 5. What happens with that point two? Actually, no, what? Screw it. Let's give it 5 out of 5 because I actually have... Nothing but good things to say about this book. It was well written. The plot was great. I was on my toes. I love the flawed characters. And I wish I could tell you a little bit more about the characters in general. But I also don't really want to spoil it. You have to experience it for yourself. I promise you. Yes, please. But the description is this, though. 
In 1940s Japan, the wealthy head of the Inugami clan dies and his family eagerly await the reading of the will, but no sooner are its strange details revealed than a series of bizarre, gruesome murder begins. Detective Kendaichi must unravel the clan's terrible secrets of forbidden lingjans, monstrous cruelty, and hidden identities to find the murderer and lift the curse, wreaking its bloody revenge on the Inugamis. The Inugami Curse is a fiendish, intricately plotted classic mystery from a giant of Japanese crime writing, starring, starring the legendary detective Kosuke Kendaichi. That description is so vague, yet it tells you everything you need about all the characters at the same time. And I think that's probably one of my favorite things about this book. And yeah, no, I have basically said my piece and now you guys know why I've been referencing this book so much on my channel. I'll probably end up continuing to talk about it on my channel because of how fun it is to read. So now that's all I got for you guys today. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button, ring the little bell to be notified of when I will upload. I am going to do my best to upload every single Tuesday. Yeah, no, you guys have yourselves a good day and bye!